you are Brian Holland, NEMA field representative. God bless you, brother. <laughs> Excellent. So NEMA National Electrical Manufacturers Association. Excellent. So NEMA is on every panel, right? That's correct. We have two representatives on all 18 code making panels. And uh, I'm excited to report this is our 100th year uh, participating in the development of the National Electrical Code. We really? first started serving on code panels for the 1926 supplement. Oh my. So the 2026 will be the 100th year that NEMA's participated in the development of this code. Awesome. Neat stuff. That so. is neat stuff. Now, so NEMA has uh, representatives on each code panel. They, they, they're typically, like I represent NEMA on code panel two, and exactly. we have other manufacturers, so they're NEMA members. Sure. But we also have NEMA, like yourself. Are you on which, you're, are you on a code panel? I'm not, but my team, so the Technical Field Representative Program team, does have representatives uh, Mike Stone, who's our West Coast field rep, right. Jack Lyons, who's our East Coast field rep. They serve on code making panel one. And Brian Ballman, our new Midwest field rep, he is serving on CMP4. That's right, and Brian was on CMP4. That's right, that's right. So we stole him from a manufacturer, <laughs> a new member, yeah. where he represented that industry. And so he was a perfect fit to be slipped back in that. Excellent, second. yeah, he was a shoe in for that and a very knowledgeable individual. So NEMA brings a lot of great talent. And in some cases, in some cases, uh, NEMA, so we have a Coach and Standards Committee that helps give technical guidance to our NEMA representatives on each sure. of the code making panels, which makes a big difference because now you have the manufacturers all manufacturers in agreement, or at least in consensus. Sure. Right? Not everybody will agree with everything that we're doing, but you have consensus on most of, if not all of the positions that are are taken at each of these code panels. Sure, so typically a code change proposal starts at the section level. So NEMA has 56 product sections okay. that are very specific to a technology or a specific section of the code. And that's where you have all the uh, real in-depth experts okay. that know all the ins and outs of that technology. Right. And then they will produce, uh, they'll propose that to Codes and Standards, who has a whole mix of industry professionals uh, that determine if it's a right fit to have NEMA's name on it. And if it gotcha. does, it becomes a public input uh, as NEMA, right. and not necessarily representing any longer an individual company or an individual section. It becomes yeah. NEMA's proposal yeah, or comment. That carries a lot of weight at the panel and, and it represents the industry very well. So NEMA does a great job on all of the different code making panels. Now your job, what are you doing here in, in Charleston? What's your role? Yeah, so there's four of us trying to track 18 different code panels. So we want to monitor all the NEMA PIs, of course, to see yep. uh, if there was any contentious items or if we can learn any intelligence from uh, the debates and the discussions so we can go back and, and create a public comment. Right. Uh, in the in the event uh, of NEMA PIs uh, resolved, um, also uh, we just want to see what other organizations organizations and associations are doing. So uh, maybe we'll come back with some ideas yeah. uh, and feed that intelligence back to codes and standards uh, into individual sections, just so right, they're right. aware of the things that are happening going on, and uh, that way we're best prepared. Uh, going into the second, the second, second phase revision, of yeah, or second draft meetings, yeah. So you're going around uh, monitoring, and then you can bring to the attention of codes and standards or the individual product sections anything that might they need to be aware of, whether it was a, a NEMA public input or not, because there are a lot of changes that are going on sure. that could impact. Yeah. Manu and we want to make sure that as manufacturers, we're delivering solutions that meet the National Electrical Code Department. Yeah, you got the good, the bad, the ugly, uh, the <laughs> opportunities, I am. <laughs> the challenges. I'm at least uh, two of them. The pros, the cons. It, it's the whole gamut. So yeah. the nice thing about my position at NEMA is uh, I don't necessarily have to take a position. It's just the facts, ma'am. Just the facts. So uh, I'm just delivering the information as it was uh, delivered by the code making panel members and then let codes and standards members decide what the position is and then, then I'll become a champion of that once it gets put into the codes Absolutely. and we're looking to get this adopted at the state okay, and local level. You mentioned right in the beginning the NEMA field rep program. Why yes. don't you just let it, I, I think that's like the best kept secret in the electrical industry well, for many. You. So why don't you let everybody know what is the NEMA field rep program? Fantastic. So the uh, NEMA technical field representative program, we're a team of four uh, and we're broken up into four distinct regions where they have similar demographics, uh, political persuasions, and uh, it's aligned uh, very nicely with the IAEI sections. 
um, as we want to have uh, influence in relationships with the enforcers, yeah. uh, the entities that regulate the products that our members manufacture. Yeah, uh, yeah. So we find that uh, to be a, a super important part of what we do. But uh, we're engaged in all things codes and standards. So codes and standard development, like we're doing here at the first draft meetings. Uh, but then also, of course, codes and standards adoption uh, at the federal, state, and local level and uh, code enforcement. So we do lots of education and training for AHJs, installers, design professionals. That way, once we get this nice code developed, then we get the states and local jurisdictions to adopt it. We get robust and effective enforcement of that. And that kind of completes the wheel uh, back yeah. to where we learn how products are functioning and operation in the field. And then we can deliver back to the members to create the proposals the next cycle absolutely and it just keeps on happening it keeps on and happening. it's exciting absolutely so what do you think out of everything that you've seen so far here at the uh at the nfpa code making panel first draft meetings what do you think are the maybe two most significant things you've seen what's on your radar well i think the the big giant pink elephant in the room is the restructuring oh yeah so <laughs> the restructuring yeah. it's in the back of the minds of every cmp Yep. And you were starting to see the inklings of that activity happening. Articles being moved around, consolidated, moved yep. to kind of set up this, this concept that uh, should take full fruition in 2029. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've, I've been pretty excited to see um, how that's been developing. Going on. A perfect example of that. Yep. So uh, consolidation of Article 722 through 770. And, and they even borrowed Chapter 8 and said, hey, why don't we just throw this all into one group, even though we don't have purview. <laughs> and, uh, and, but it looks good. Um, yeah. Panel 7 this morning put yeah. together a brand new article called uh, Installations on Bodies of Water, where they borrowed 680 from Panel 17, even oh, really? and, and Article 682 and 555, and said, hey, maybe these should all be in one place. Wow, uh, that's so, huge. Yeah, I didn't know that was going thing. on. So uh, happy to see that. And, wow, uh, that's awesome. Yeah, okay, so that's, that's one. That's my big one. That's your big one. All right, <laughs> that's a big one. Yep, that's um, good. I'll reserve, I'll reserve judgment. Okay. I still have four days to go. That's and I right. still have four panels that I'll be monitoring for the rest of the week. All right. I'm and I'll come back and give you my top ten list. How's we'll that? have to catch you like on Friday before we leave. Perfect. Brian, thank you. You're the best time. Thanks for all you do, buddy. All right, thank you. Cool beans.